on an all new line by line. Join us in exclusive interview with Making Georgia's native Jerry Anderson and the upcoming biographical theater playwright of his life, The Rise and Fall Redemption, The Life of Jerry Anderson, and we'll also meet the amazing team behind this new project. I'm hoping that the film can show people that don't glove, don't glorify selling drugs and doing the wrong thing. I'm hoping that it bring them all back and say, hey, this man trying to help us out. He trying to help us sit out. He came back, he left bad. Now he coming back and he's pouring his heart out to try to keep kids from going to prison, kids from doing the wrong thing. Guys stand on the corner, them, the gang stuff, the crypt, the blood stuff, because that's all that's for. When you're doing all that stuff though, you know you're going to prison. I've always been here all of my life. And out of this project, I want, when you watch this play, I want you to walk away knowing that one minute you can be on top, the next minute everything will be gone. So it's best to earn your wages the correct way. People living with sickle cell disease, a pain crisis can change their story in an instant. I was so excited to open prisons with my family at Christmas, but I had to miss it. The pain was like shattered glass traveling through my veins. One moment you're in school, and the next you're about to pass out, barely able to walk into the hospital. The day my track team beat the school's record, everyone was there to cheer me on, except my mom, because a pain crisis put her in the hospital. I was getting ready for my graduation ceremony when the pain crisis struck. I spent my big day in the hospital. My sister loved to dance. She worked so hard to be in a big production, but when the day came, she was in so much pain. She couldn't do it. She was crushed. When a sickle cell pain crisis strikes, life can change in an instant. Together, we are stronger. Be a part of the movement. Visit joingens.com. At that time, my most famous saying was, oh, it's red, and that's what I was crazy about. I didn't know the rest of them because I was too young. Fifth grade, I think, when Otis Redden died. It hurt me to my heart. I attended to B.S. Ingram Grammar School. I went to Central Middle School, and I went to Central High School. My Central Georgia fan. I am Central Georgia. State Championship, 1975. It was all in the height back then. We was all like one big family. There was a lot of respect, everybody did it together. So you, your child did wrong, his mama whooped my, his mama whooped me and called my mama and tell him. And my mama said, okay, tie him up every time he liked that. So it was just a matter of respecting each other. And that would led me up to this taking care of each other. We looked out for each other. If we were home, somebody else would give the family some food and then we'll pay them back that weekend. So that would lead on to that. This man I play football wide receiver. You know, my dream was to go to college and go to NFL because I got this knee injury and because of things that happened on down the line that I went to college for, for Knoxville College in Tennessee for a couple of months. And I had to leave because of what was happening at home with my mama and my kids, they needed help. So I had to get up out of there, go home and try to find a job to help the family out. Well, it started with my mama first. She been working for 35 years at a medical center. And she needed help. She done got up in her age now, and she needed help. And she turned to me. I don't know why. It's, it's eight of us. But she used to always look at me and start crying and say, Jerry, I need help. Jerry, I need help. And they just break me down. Just, just ate me up. I, I done had no job. I'm trying to find a job. I'm in college. I Got to leave college now, I got to come home. I try to be a fireman, I try to be a sheriff, I try to be a police officer. I tried everything there was, no success. Back then it was, it was like, we're going to just get a certain black, you going to hire this black, one black today, and all whites. You're going to hire, that's the way it's it always been that way. You're going to hire more whites than you do black. But it was a lot of black, it was a lot of us black there apply for all these jobs and it was hard for her to get in them. So they're gonna take on the one. And if ten of us just as good as that one and you take it. I feel that I should have been the one that got took because they had a girl. I had to help her through her whole her to help her through her whole program. 
but they hired her because she was the weakest out of all of us. So it kind of messed with my head. Too. You go hire her? And I took her through the whole course. So that was thought of me off the door thinking crazy. I can't get in there. Uh, nobody won't let me in. I'm, and plus, I'm missing the test by a point. You asking me stuff that I didn't know nothing about because I'm telling her I had the project. I don't know what kind of supplies them is, what kind of screaming. Nobody didn't show me this kind of stuff. So it more messed with my head because I couldn't. I should have been in there, but I didn't know what I needed to do to get in there. So that started me going all the way. So that's when everything started going all the way. I started selling. I met the girl. She knew people from Florida. And that's how it all came. She pulled out this stuff and tell me, she making all this money from all this stuff. And I don't know what it is, but money. People knock on the door and like this him. And just bringing their money and getting this stuff and going. I'm like, what is that? And she tell me what it was. And she said, Ask me that I want to do it. So she leave me with 10 of these, 10 25 cent pieces, 10 50 dollar pieces, and say, I'm going to go to the store when I come back and see, can you sell this? Before she could even get in the car and drive off and get to the store, she leave and come back. All of it gone. I'm going to I need some more. For people still knocking on the door. Because the more money I made, it still got a lot of families out there that, a lot of people coming to me needing something. Because I'm making so much money. It was my duty to take care of them too. So a lot of people come to me telling me all the stuff I did. I can't even remember my half of the stuff. But all I knew was from coming up from a little boy up, we looked out for each other. So that's what led me in the, you need it, I got it. You want to go to college? I got it. I'm making thousands and millions of dollars a week. So I got all this money. I can't do nothing with all this money anyway. You want to go to college? You want a new car so you can get to your job? You whatever they wanted. I gave it to them. That's what. That's how. I, that's why I would. I would talk that away by my mama coming up. I always look out for somebody, your brother and sister, and I always look out for everybody else that when they really need you. Don't let people play on you because you got to be able to figure them out too. But you got to know when people really need you, and you got to always have an open heart and say, "Here you go." You got to do it for them. So that would lead me to me. My thing always was the people first. My mama was first. Then everybody else that needed me. I didn't care nothing about the money. I didn't mind back then. I was just like this. My thing was always, I just like to give the police a hard time. I didn't care about making the money and nothing. I just like to hear them, please, Jerry, stop doing what you're doing. So it didn't really bother me. But now that why I said I apologize to the officers and stuff at that time. Cause I was just real, I was arrogant back then, real arrogant. So my thing, like I said, the, the, the rappers and all the people that day now, they don't care. They just look out for sales. That's the only way they would do. But me, as I grow now, whatever I do with money I make now from proceeds, from, from what I'm doing, I want to go I want to get some buildings. I need to put some computers in it. I need to have a place where after 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock, that was most crime. More people get killed in the crime now. So I'm trying to get somewhere from 6 to 12 with police officers helping me out to where kids can go do stuff and have fun and go home and be safe. If you get them all the screen, you give them something to do. They won't be thinking about going out there killing each other. Cause the only thing they do after 6 o'clock is get together and think of stuff they can do wrong because they ain't nothing for them to do. If you got them place to go, play basketball, computer room, anything that they can get their mind of what they want to do, and they won't be, it won't be that much crime in there. I went to a meeting one time with a lot of judges and prosecutors were there, and they was just talking about, it. come to me and tell me this, and, and before it's too late, come along thinking about just locking you up. I asked them before, come, I need donation, help me out. Come help me, so I, cause I know how to, I know how to go in them prices with them, in them little corner with all the crips and blood. They gonna let me in there cause of respect for me. They know I ain't coming there to play with them. I ain't going there and talk to them, but you have to have money to take people to football games to Atlanta, to a basketball game. These guys like to go, want to go up there, give me a, get a bus, drive them up there and let them watch the Hawks or the Falcon play. That makes them sort of thinking, man, I got a life. I might can't go this other way and do the right thing. But I asked them before, downtown City Hall, wherever you are, I need help. If you can help me out, I'm going to stop some of this crime for you. So I just need you to come meet me halfway. So I'm have to, you got, I got to do it myself. That's why I'm doing the Rise and Fall of Jerry Anderson. That's why I got to do a book. That's why people been coming to me talking about doing a movie. All this stuff, you know, the money I make from there, 
going out to be to help them out because dying time I ain't saying, Jerry, we hear you. Dying time I heard dying time from some some from some big people down town said, they got a bet on Jerry. I said, going to start back selling drill. They think I'm going to go back the other way. It ain't going to never happen. When God, when I was in that room in prison, wrestling with God every night, arguing with him every night, but if he give me another chance, what I'm going to do? It ain't got nothing to do. I'll never go back and sleep on the my beds and that still never again. But I promise God, when I got out of prison, my goal is to go get them little kids and them kids that up in age that I know can be turned around. They want to be turned around. It's there's always going to be some kids that can't hear nothing you saying. They're going to go to prison. They got to go there just like I did. I couldn't hear nothing nobody was telling me. I had to go to prison and learn what I learned. And in my first 12 years, I was mad at the world because I was in prison. I wanted to get back out and come back to Maker and get even bigger in the selling drill. But after 12 years, my mind started realizing what was going on, how wrong I was, what did I need to do. So that's when I got myself under control. Some people have to go to prison and do all that time for it and finally a click hit them. And they realize, hey, man, I'm in hell. My mama done died, my dad and my sisters. I ain't got what a few people left out there. I've been here all these years and my people dying around me because I'm still thinking crazy. So now you gotta get in their store and say, okay, how can I get some help? They start going to the law library to try to get out of prison. They start calling people that they still got said, Change, I need some help. Can you please? I want to come home and do the right thing. That's what a lot of people have, that a lot of people have to go through, but I got said to the politician. I'm never going the wrong way. I need help from y'all so I can help the kids out. Watch out for 12 like that afternoon uh -huh. You put that working in the field, that's what you have to do Straight killer Von Miller when they let me loose Shouldn't have let me loose Throw some things to the Bonnie vaccination Numbers going by, check the calculation Always, always on, don't need no activation Know where I'm going, don't need no navigation Always, always tripping, need to travel age Land in Collins, got them all aggravated Knock up your head, leave them all decapitated Finally winning now, say congratulations I ain't get stressed, no way, I'm way too blessed Way too blessed Hollywood Show people that don't glorify, don't glorify selling drugs and doing the wrong thing. I'm hoping that they bring them all back and say, hey, this man trying to help us out. He trying to help us sit out. He came back, he left bad. Now he coming back and he's pouring his heart out to try to keep kids from going to prison, kids from doing the wrong thing. Guys stand on the corner of them, the gang stuff, the crib, the blood stuff, cause that's all that's for. When you doing all that stuff though, you know you're going to prison. I'm hoping that it put make it on the map, and I'm hoping that it hit a lot of guys out there, mm -hmm. so they can start realizing they can get a job and they can help out their families without doing selling drugs or going down the wrong way. Have to go to prison all these years to get yourself together. All you doing is sending yourself to prison. You going to prison? Like I did, I thought I could beat this. I'm gonna sell drugs forever. I ain't never going. I'm jail. I was hard. But I had a friend of mine call me from California. He said, Look, man, you're knocking on the door. You're going to prison. I ain't going to prison. Now, this is my town. But I was going to prison. And like I said before, I had to go to prison and get what he was saying. And I'm just hoping that they rise and fall, show all the young kids coming up. Selling drugs, riding in the car, all the live music, making all the money, the jewelry on your neck, all the girls hanging around you, you're going to the clubs and having all this fun. That's a, that's a bad way, that's the wrong way to go. 
I went that way. And you see me go that way. And you see what it did for me. It got me 28 years sleeping on steel and concrete. I'm thinking I'm going to never come home. But don't be for God, who got the all praise to, putting Obama in the right place. I don't be here today. Obama said, all the judges, I had 12 judges him and prosecutor, everybody signed a petition. Now, please don't let him go. Me speaking to the President Obama on the phone, he said, Jerry, these people do not want me to release you. He said, but I believe in second chance. He said, I'm going to give you a second chance. Man, don't let me down. And that's part of me right there. I said, I can't let him down. And I thank God for giving me a second chance. And most of all, I can't let me down. And I can't let down these kids. I had to kill killing each other and going to prison for nothing because I got the knowledge to steal them another way. All you got to do is listen out there. Just listen. And you ain't going up in there. But those who can't hear me, man, when you get in there, you call me, write me and tell me, I'm going to still kick it with you and tell you what right. And I'm going to even try to help you to get your attorney or wherever to get you up out of there because I know somebody got to go. Denise Anderson. Hello. I'm actually a part of a local black organization and we was doing a, a demonstration on mass incarceration. And it was a couple of people on the table, and they was like, well, you take this one. I was like, okay, and it ended up being Jerry Anderson. So I ended up going to the state capitol meeting with Governor Nathan Deal. As he said, there was a lot of people that didn't want him to get free, and there was a petition going around. But it was also a petition going around for him to be freed. So that actually made it to Barack Obama as well. Um, We've been married six months now. Um, Jerry, when once Jerry came, once his name came up, and after that, we just, a couple of months later, he was free. Yeah, I was up in Henderson Stadium working out, and she was riding by every day to my some kids throwing rocks at her car, just on my kids, to she stood it. Baby, me up, coming and every day she coming like she just coming by, but knowing all the while she coming to get the big dog. Actually, at that time, I had no interest in Jerry. I just wanted him to get free. I knew about the story side. Mm. <laughs> I had no interest at that mm. time. Yeah, that's sad. <laughs> well, I'm a. I was a single parent as well. Um, I knew that Jerry could get the attention of other children you know I'm very passionate about children in the community and them going in the right direction you know I have two boys so I felt like with this project Jerry could make a very big impact in saving another child and keeping them from going the way that he did so this is it was uh God showed me the vision I hooked up I was trying to find somebody to, you know, she came first, she said, well, you might, you know, you can make a play. And I said, that was, I got people coming from everywhere. I want me to do movies, play, boom, write books. I said, but I have no idea how to get in on these people and then do this. Huh? But she knew all this. She, that's her role. She knew all the peoples. She knew all this. She said, I got you. Don't worry, let me do all this. Huh? So she started calling the producer because she knew him. She started calling everybody. She just started putting all the dots, but dude said, well, we just do it for, cause you Jerry Baz, I want to do you. We're going to just do it. We've been going at it hard at it. And, and I've just been sitting back saying, she is mine. What you hear from me? I'm your manager. She's my manager. Also, Jessica is my sister manager. They going hard for me. They just going hard. I'm just sitting back, whatever they do, they promoting everything they doing, I'm just sitting back. They can go off for sending them too, because they both on time with everything they do. Hi everyone, I'm Jessica Lewis. As Jerry stated earlier, I'm the assistant manager. So when Ernestine is unavailable, I'm next in line, just so that he can have a peace of mind, because I can just imagine how people would drive him crazy. <laughs> just because he's a celebrity, like, you know, folks are drive you nuts. And so what part I fit into all of this is serving them you know, whatever they need. So 
I, Ernestine and I met through a black organization here in the local area and we've known each other for a couple of years and I heard about Jerry Anderson because and how I fit into this I'll bring it full circle is my dad and brother are both serving life sentences without the chance of parole my brother was a juvenile lifer my father not a juvenile lifer but through the grace of God they're able to come home as well so when Ernestine called me and asked me if I could help assist with the planning of all of this, I said, oh, absolutely, why not? And more importantly, the story just hits home so much for me because I feel like Jerry is my brother. Jerry is my dad. And anyone that's going to come here, they're going to be able to relate if they had a family member who was incarcerated. And many family members don't get to come home. He was blessed to be able to do so, but so many family members aren't able to come home. This story is going to really demonstrate to the family side because when you choose and make bad choices, as Jerry describes it, and it is what it is, unfortunately, it affects the family as well. You know, I've been doing two life sentences. His family was doing a life sentence. And so what I would like to see is when people come he wants the young people to come i want the moms the dads the aunts the uncles the cousins come out and see so you can see what could happen if you don't intervene so there are ways for people to prevent some things and as he shared he was arrogant he was feeling himself you probably have your children your uncles your brothers doing the same exact thing and showing seeing this play will allow for you to see what can happen if you act like you don't care if you act like well he ain't hurting me I'm gonna mind my business or furthermore he's giving me something so I'm gonna mind my business there are so many things that you'll be able to relate to in this play that is going to blow people's mind because some people are just looking at him as a thug some people are looking at him as a hero some people are looking at him as a savior whatever way you're looking at him you're probably going to get that from the play you know, the play is going to tell the whole truth, and I feel like the truth is going to either save your life or set your life. Whatever way you choose to let it infect you, be careful with it. So you can go and watch this and act like um, that's never going to happen to me, the arrogance, right? Or you can say, you know what? This man was right. Let me do something different. Let me save the lives of my children. And that can be done very easily just by coming there and watching that play so you can really, really understand what has happened, the real truth behind his story. Well, hello, <laughs> I'm Lanita King with Royalty Love Crazes Incorporated. Um, I've been in the production business for over 14 years. Um, I've worked with a lot of playwrights, um, but with this one, working with Creative Elite Production, which is a brother company of mine, um, I started, uh, I helped Steven build his company, which is Steven C. Little. He is the, um, he's the CEO of Creative Elite Productions and the writer of the wonderful production that we're bringing to making um, The Rise and Fall. Um, uh, I, well, coming into production with Steven, um, by far I can say working in 14 years of different playwrights, Steven is the number one, I can say, is the most creative. And he challenges me to um, bring in the portion that I do. So what I do in production is when there is a play or a script, what I do is I'll take it and I'll transform it into production ready, as in light cues, sound cues, different things to make it stage ready and ready for the public. Um, um, with this production, I was very... I can say that I'm honored to be on this project because um, when Mrs. Anderson came to Steven initially about doing the production, um, he was very excited. I had to be confident and that's why it's very important to have someone that who knows how it works from beginning to end and all the little small intricate parts. That's the part that I play. Um, Steven has been on the stage for a while um, doing in production and that's kind of where we linked up. Um, I actually pulled him into a project um, that I was working on and starting in. And we was having the hardest time trying to find a lead role male. 
And, well, Steven was one of the ones that helped teach dance, sing, and, and one of the headliners. So, um, I approached him one particular day. I was like, listen, I'm in a production and there's a fight scene and I see you choreograph dances or whatnot. Do you think you can come choreograph a dance? He was like, yeah, sure, problem, no problem. Um, so, when I went back to present that to the playwright at the time that I was working with then, um, she was like, that's great, but I really need somebody to act this part with you. I was like, well, I don't, I'll ask to see if he's willing to, you know, but when he got there, he was came to be a choreographer for a spite scene, but he ended up being my husband in the play. This is really Macon's very first, based on a true story production. And for him to be approached to do it was an honor for him. Um, and then he let me know what was going on. I was very excited for him. I said, you could absolutely do this. Um, so when he got with um, Mrs. Anderson and, and Jerry, of course, and they went through whatever they needed to, to get the storyline down, when he presented it back to me, I was blown away. And I was like, I know this is going to go so far and it's deeper than just trying to tell a story. It's actually going to transcend and help people see what they need to do, what not to do. And um, it's an amazing story to, to witness and to be a part of. And I'm just honored to be on it. Um, I would say that um, it's going to be a production not like anything else that has come to making. Um, and we have put our heart and soul into it. And it's going to be entertaining from beginning to end. You're going to be laughing and crying and get angry. But it, most importantly, you're going to get something um, life altering out of it. And that's, I'm pretty sure, what they were go, what was the goal for it. And I'm just excited to be a part of it. So my thing is to always, to the, to the community, what the rise and fall is good stuff for you. It's just me doing something to help you or I can help you in the future. That's all. I'm just asking you to come see the play. Bring your kids. Bring your kids. Let them see what good life is and what happens when at the end of your good life when you're going the wrong way. That's what I, all I want you to do. Bring them let them see the bad way. And look, tickets being sold. We got tickets. They had the Douglas, whatever. But it's for your kids to see this stuff. Bring them out. Parents that live in the house all the time got them to do. You come and bring your kids and let them see. If you don't want them, you know they who in your house doing wrong that you can't get to. And I say again, like I always say in the interview I do, if you need me to come talk to your kids, the ones that you know wrong, reach out to me. I'll be there. That is my promise to God. And that promise is going to be broke. It is to talk to the kids that are going the wrong way. I ain't going to never steal them wrong. I'm always coming at them hard and let them know the hard way. It ain't nothing nice when you talk to me. I'm always let you know the hard stuff, what you're going to go to if you choose to keep going the wrong way, and what's going to happen to you, what you need to do when you're in there. So, parents, the rise and fall is a good thing. It ain't bad. I ain't trying to glorify nothing. I ain't trying to make a million dollars and walk around and more brand new cars and do all this. I just want to help your child out from going the wrong way. That is my thing. So, come see the play. I'm seeing the rise, fall, and redemption of Jerry Anderson. October 18 and 19 at 6.30. Be there.